Uncle Mark. Yeah, what's happening, man? <sighs> Nothing good. Um, ah, what? Yeah. Come on. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's hard not to feel alone and lonely in this here world of ours these days. It's an easy thing to do, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, you could just sit in your, your apartment or your house and stare out the window, or you can turn on the fire hose of bile that is the news, or <laughs> we could listen to Uncle Dan tell us a story about someone who's there to protect us, maybe. <laughs> the police. <laughs> yeah. I, well, yeah. Indeed. There, are, there is a lot of turmoil in the world right now. Uh, smart people are still sheltering at home and social distancing because there's still a pandemic raging around the world. Mm. And that stress is really starting to wear on folks. And racial tensions are high as people around the world protest the wanton murder of black folks by unrepentant police officers. The cruise where you could get the chance to meet Garrison Keillor was canceled. It's a rough time oh, is what I'm trying on. to say. No, no. God. So, with all the protests after the murder of George Floyd this week, I wanted to get quite serious. I, w- I decided I would talk about the Ku Klux Klan. And no. Because I, I, I knew that they are an explicitly religious organization. I figured their dogmatic belief in the superiority of their race, despite the idiocy of their membership, easily qualified them as a cult. Yeah, uh, for sure. And I wanted to discuss the fact that in the last decade or more, they've made a concerted effort to get their members onto police forces across our country. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that when I dove into the reading for that, I found I just didn't have the stomach for it. Mm -hmm. It's just been a really rough time, and I couldn't bring myself to look directly into the eyes of that beast this week. It was just too much. So I went for something silly instead. Bummers. Yay! Bummers. Sorry, guys. We'll do the clan another time. Some other time. Yeah. Maybe in 12 years. Anyway, <laughs> I went for the patron saint of beards. Hey. <laughs> That's right, boys. Look, the three of us are all usually in some form or other of beardedness these days. Oh, y'all. I thought you were talking about Liberace's girlfriend, that kind of beard. <laughs> <laughs> well... It might, maybe that too. Maybe yeah. that too. We'll get to it. Okay. But but yes, the three of us. Uh, how how are your beards doing? Where are you at? Beard mine wise? is yeah. Well, I think Uncle Mark might have us all beat, but mine is certainly mm. in the. I'm in I'm in my full lumberjack mode. I, yes, I trimmed down a bit just because I wanted a better seal for tear gas. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. When this pandemic started happening, I uh, I I've gotten pretty co- complacent, so I've just let mine go. I'm cor- I'm very shaggy. Myself. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, well, so it, it's hard to like a um, why, you know, yeah. like what's the fucking point? I don't look Who at myself in the mirror these days because I don't want to look see what's looking back at me <laughs> for all kinds of reasons. <laughs> and also, like I, I can't go to someone to have it trimmed down, and so I just fuck it. Yeah, I haven't. You know, same with the toenails. Yes, <laughs> ew. I think okay. basically. We're all living like Howard Hughes at this point, is what Doug says. Yeah, yeah. Exa- Doug, Doug needs a whole litany of saints to pray to. But mm-hmm. what I have for right now is the saint for all of our lushy, luscious, healthy, voluminous beards, uh, and that is Saint Wilgefortis. <laughs> okay. No, this yes. is we do this during the patron section. Yeah, we, we don't make up this. We don't make up segments. Yeah, this is on. not the time for that. Oh, Saint Wilga- Wilgefortis. Wilga- what? Wilgefortis, and why is this the patron saint of hirsute faces? Because, like us, Wilgefortis had a magnificent mane, a glorious face full of whiskers. So what, you might ask? Why would we care about a saint's beard? Well, two reasons. A, Wilgefortis grew this literally miraculous beard in one night, Mm. and B, Mm. not unlike the twist in Uncle Mark's uh, little thing, her fiance was very upset when he saw it. Oh no! Oh, da, 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 da. That's right. Wilga Fortis was a woman. Wilga Biga was a was a lady person. She was the bearded lady saint of Portugal, the <laughs> courageous virgin with the heart of gold and a face of fur. So here's the story. Whoa. Saint Wilga Fortis was one of seven daughters of a pagan king in Portugal. Now, as we've learned, there are two types of females in the world of sanctum, old and pious, or young, beautiful, and unblemished by interaction with a penis. Mm. <laughs> she was the pretty virgin type. Mm. In fact, the name Wilga Fortis is not really her name. 
It was probably a corruption of the Latin Virgo Fortis, which uh, in Latin is courageous virgin. Hmm. Uh, she also went by many other names, but I'll get into that later. So, wow, this as I was episode saying, is really taking on a, a certain tone, isn't it? I like it. <laughs> it's very it's, gender bendy all over the place, and I'm here for it. I'm yeah, exactly. I, when yeah. you were doing your thing, I was like, oh, this, we got a whole theme happening. Yeah, here. yeah. This, guys, I like this, we planned to, this all obviously. I am going to fuck up the theme. <laughs> You're going to ruin the theme. All right, that's fine. First half of the show will have a theme. Uh, anyway, uh, Wilgi was young and beautiful, and her hymen was beautifully spotless. So uh, this was because she had secretly become a Christian mm. and, her, and had decided to dedicate her vagina to God forever, like all the best teen Christian girls do. Mm-hmm. When and this then, they thing, only do, then they only do butt stuff. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That it's, it's the poop hole loophole. Uh, <laughs> well, this made things pretty awkward when her papa announced that he had betrothed her to a pagan prince in Sicily. Surely a husband would complicate her vow of chastity, and mm. also maybe he was yucky. So <laughs> Wilgie decided that uh, she was so upset that she refused the marriage. And in a rage, her father threw her in a dungeon to think about what she'd done and wait for her, uh, her future husband to arrive and claim her. And while in the dungeon, she prayed to God to intercede and stop the marriage. But she knew that she needed a more cunning plan than just, you know, please, Lord, kill this Sicilian guy, or dear God, please change my dad's mind. So she came up with a great plan. You know, that's not, please the, first God. Time, that's not the first time God has heard the prayer, please kill this Sicilian guy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, that, yeah, the last. unfortunately... What you should be praying to is another Sicilian guy. Anyway, <laughs> please, God, her prayer went, make me so ugly that this prince won't want me. Oh. The next day, boom, she was Dumbledore. <laughs> sure enough, as soon as the prince saw her, he was repulsed and took off. Great success. And they all lived happily ever after the end. Right. Oh, that was wonderful. <laughs> Wrong, obviously. Anyone who has listened to any saint segments on this show knows that saints of old don't get happy endings. No. You got to be a martyr to get sainthood. Well, so, I, I do love that the part of the story is that her father just throws her in a dungeon. <laughs> and when the guy from Sicily shows up, no one's concerned what he might think about that fact. Right. That she's been in. Like, where's your daughter? Oh, she's in the fucking dungeon. Oh, great. Grab her. No, yeah, like, exactly. No problem well, there. Well, bring her up. Let's see. Let's take a look at the goods. Right. <laughs> Anyway. No, so Wilgefortis' dad was so upset by these events that he just that he decided to punish this Christian daughter of his. If you love Jesus so damn much, much, her father said in a rage, then you'll die just like him. So he took her to his favorite crucifying spot, hung her to a cross, and killed her. <laughs> there. Now she can be a saint. Oh. And for good measure, there's a little side story about a poor fiddler who came and played at her dead, dangling feet. Uh, Though dead, or mostly dead, she liked the music and, in recompense, kicked off one of her golden shoes for him. No word as to why anyone would wear golden shoes, but shut up. Okay, there's a problem here. Uh, (laughs) Oh, you found the one! (laughs) Other than gold shoes, which is a terrible way to make a shoe... um, Yeah. Uh, it seems like an incomplete crucifixion if you can kick your foot. Well, shut up. Also, <laughs> shut up. Cop- copy that. It's a fair point. Uh, so when the fiddler went to sell the gold, he was accused of stealing the shoe from the dead body. Uh, he told the story of Wilgefortis giving him the shoe and convinced the cops to take him back to the place where she hung, where she was hung to prove it. He played for her again and, like before... She kicked off the other shoe, thus provi- proving that he wasn't a thief and that this whole story and, and also proving that this whole story was obviously just made up. OK. And, and at no point did somebody say, hey, somebody should check her pulse. <laughs> no. OK. Who cares? All right. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. So about- how, did, how did her golden gloves come off? <laughs> <laughs> it's a story for another day. Yeah. Uh. Here's the thing about uh, me saying that uh, that this also pr- that this proved that the whole story was made up. Uh, 
every time we tell a story of a saint on this show, it becomes instantly clear that it's a nonsense story. Yeah. Like, utter bunk. Yeah. As in, you could only believe it if you had been carefully trained from birth to believe nonsense stories that can't be real in spite of everything you know about how the universe works. Yeah. St. Denis, Saint Denis carrying his, head, his severed head seven miles. A hundred percent. Yeah. But this one is special. Mm. This one is different. Because despite having been venerated for centuries all over Europe, with her own place on the liturgical calendar and paintings and sculptures of her scattered hither and yon, pretty much everybody, including hardcore Catholics who believe everything they're told, knows that Wilgefortis is complete bullshit. Really? A whole cloth fabrication, and we even have a good, really good idea of how the story came about. Huh. So let's look at the real story, shall we? Sure. And even this story is steeped in some nonsense and lore, but I'm sure you'll be able to pick the wheat from the chaff on this. <laughs> so, the images of St. Wilgefortis all show a woman in a flowing gown hanging from a cross with a crown on her head. Well, that, my friends is pretty reminiscent of the iconography of another semi-famous guy in Christianity. No? Well, the, the little-known Jesus? <laughs> that little-known, that lesser-known fellow. Mm -hmm. uh, here's how pretty much everybody acknowledges that it oh, happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's okay. an image of Jesus' crucifixion in a church in Lucca, Italy. It is a 13th century copy of a much older piece, probably 11th century. Although the popular legend is that it was carved by Nicodemus, who assisted Joseph of, of Arimathea in getting Jesus' body into the tomb. But that's obviously stupid, so we can just ignore it. Sure, Jan. The, uh, <laughs> the holy face of Luca, as the sculpture is known, uh, is, the, is unique for a Western crucifix of the time, as it is about life-size, unbacked, meaning that it could be freestanding and is carved all the way around, and the Christ figure is wearing a long robe. Mm -hmm. The robe thing is likely a Byzantine influence and was made to indicate kingly presence. These were sort of king's robes. Mm. But by the time copies of this thing started touring around Europe, everybody had become totally used to the image of Christ crucified in a loincloth. Mm. And since the robes of that kind weren't really worn by men in Western Europe... People started tripping out. Mm. Either Jesus was in lady clothes, which would be terrifying and break everybody's brains entirely, or maybe this was actually a lady, you know, <laughs> with a beard. But why would a lady have a beard? I don't know. Okay, Quick, hear me make out. Up Here, a story here's, here's what I'm that thinking. will inspire us all. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a saint. Yeah, I'm looking. I looked her up, and I'm looking at the picture. It's so obviously Jesus, like the right. the, the 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 shape of the beard and everything is the classic. Yeah, classic Jesus. But he, you know, he was a very handsome um, kind he of was feminine, a, androgynous. Um, he was man a god, a pretty man. He's a pretty man. So yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to see why. Uh, it's just very funny that they saw <laughs> they saw a a Jesus in long flowing clothes and we're like L lady lady jesus <laughs> well and no one could say to them like well actually it's just priestly robes it's meant to evoke priest like, oh no we've got to come up with a whole fucking story here right so that so that's what happened there you go now there is another side to miss wilgie that's mm. far more interesting and that's her other patronage because while it's super important to have a patron saint for beards and all she actually presides over a very real issue that traditionally has gotten short shrift in society mm. and definitely in the Catholic Church. Hmm. Now, I mentioned earlier that she has many different names. And since she was made, a made-up person, none of her names are names. They're all <laughs> verbs and adjectives. Huh. Aside from being called Courageous Virgin in the Latin, she was also known in England as Saint Uncumber, a reference to being freed from a burden. Okay. In Italy, she was liberata. In Spain, librada, both meaning liberated. In France, she was Saint Debaras, which means riddance. The point here is that she's the patron saint of women oppressed by patriarchy. 
Oh, of course. Wow. That's not how the church would word it. Uh, they word it as the patron saint of wives with uh, wives of abusive husbands, but that isn't it, really, is it? Hmm. She never had a husband, and I could find no evidence of a version of the story where her fiance abused her in any way. Her story is that of a woman who wasn't allowed to choose her fate, and God saved her. Hmm. Interestingly, by making her more like a man. <laughs> Now, one could argue that in her case, the cure might have been worse than the disease. Unhappy arranged marriage is bad, but crucifixion, at least in most cases, is probably worse. Probably. I think, I think even Melania would choose her marriage again over being crucified. So I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. She's, she's already and, pre-anesthetized, so it doesn't really matter. Right. Yes, no matter they, how you slice they always, it, though. They always gave anesthetic before crucifixion because it's just <laughs> right. best practices. Yeah. But uh, no matter how you slice it, you know, thanks for the beard, God. It worked out real great for her. <laughs> Nevertheless, I can't help but think that a big part of what made Wilgefort as popular for all those years was the fact that women who had no appreciable say in the workings of their own lives had someone to pray to about it. Hmm. They had a champion. And, you know, they as they suffered abuse and indignities and as every major event in their lives were decided by men who often didn't care at all about their feelings, they had someone to talk to who would understand. Now, it was only recently that Wilgefortis was taken off the liturgical calendar. Really? The Catholic Church, quote, cult suppressed her in 1969, which I guess means that she no longer, uh, that she's no longer an officially supported saint. The reason they gave for this was that her story was likely made up, which, I mean, doy. But, like, <laughs> have you read any of the other stories, Catholic yeah. Church? Do you think the Guys fact Guys walking that, around and holding their own decapitated head? Yeah. Do you think the fact that they dethroned her during the Summer of Love and kind of the beginnings of the women's, women's liberation movement is a coincidence? Well, you know, I, one can't help but wonder... If the boys club at the Vatican just didn't like women having somebody to pray to about men calling all the shots. Hmm. I think that's I'm written sure... in Latin above the door to the Vatican. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I, I'm sure that's not the case. That would indicate that men in power can be, you know, petulant, insecure, fragile little assholes. And when has that ever been the case? <laughs> huh. Wow, Very that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I think you're right. Like it, 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 they, they. I'm reading her page, and they, the church has tried to make it seem like, oh, it's just for women who are abused by their husbands, and it's like, no, nah, it seems like it really is about the patriarchy that you motherfuckers are part of. Yeah, yeah. So, yep. so there you go. Uh, it's it's all a made up story, but this is the part. This is one of the made up stories. That even the people who believe it acknowledge is made up. <laughs> right. It's okay to like someone that never existed. Yeah. yeah. Is Christians it? do it every day. Yeah, sure. And no harm comes uh -huh. of that. No, never. <clears throat> well, that's right. fascinating. Oh, uh, Garrison Whaler. What? Huh? Garrison Whaler is the name of the cruise that Garrison <laughs> oh. Keeler is going to be on. Oh God! It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you Timing talking? is everything. Yeah. Well, it was uh, it was canceled anyway, so we don't. <laughs> So nothing's good in the world. Pray to St. Wilgefortis for relief. Uh, and she's also the patron saint of extremely delayed callbacks. So, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Doug, your theme better have some queerness in it or I'm hanging up the phone. So, yeah. all right, let's move on. Moving on. Moving on.